Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla and in today's video we are doing a subscriber financial review. Three quick things before we get into the video. The first thing, if you want a video just like this for your financial situation, it will be anonymous. You can submit that information to my email that is in my description box and I also have a list of things down there that would be helpful for you to include in your email. Just note that I have quite a few of these piled up in my email so there will be a delay in me getting your video up. Second thing, I also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if you are interested in getting help with budgeting, with saving, setting goals, paying down your debt, all of that stuff, then definitely check out my website. I do have a couple of options there. I also have group coaching coming soon as well, which I'm super excited about. I do have a wait list for that, so you can enter your name and email. That link is in the description box, of course. And the third and final thing, if you are going to leave any feedback for this individual that this video is about in the comments, just make sure that it is friendly. I do want this to be a community thing and I want help from other people as well for this individual, but please just make sure that you're being kind. All right, so first of all, I'm going to read through this email. I am gonna read the intro, which usually I leave off, but I just really, it gives a little bit of context and I just, I really appreciate it. So here we go. Layla, I hope that you could help my wife and I with our budget and financial situation. We would really like to be in your subscriber review. I have been watching your channel now since the beginning of 2023 and have changed my mindset on debt and finances and have been able to get out of some debts already because of it. So this is going to be for a married couple, their situation, combined finances. And I just love when I see, you know, when people call out that they've been watching since so-and-so time and because of that they've been making changes. I know that they're probably watching other content and listening to other content, but I just love that so much. Like that fills my soul up. Like y'all have no idea because that is exactly what I want with not only these videos, but everything else that I post, just like showing my journey and talking about finances, improving finances. I know I say this frequently, but, but finances are still such a taboo topic. Like it's gotten better, but people are really afraid to, to talk about their finances. And I'm glad that, you know, quite a few people are starting to pay attention and yeah, it's just so important. So I really, really appreciate that. And I, yeah, can, can only hope to, to expand my audience so that I can help more people, even if they're just watching my content. About ourselves and our situation, we are both 40 years old and have a five-year-old daughter. I am in IT and do software development and have a salary of 63,000 a year. My wife is a medical assistant and makes $18.53 an hour. Our take-home income per month is $5,642. We own a house and have a mortgage on it, and we live near Indianapolis. Our daughter goes to kindergarten and daycare, so that is a big monthly expense, almost as much as our house. As I was reading this, something that really stood out to me was his salary for what he does. So he says he's in IT and does software development, making 63000 I would think that you can probably find a job making six figures, at least. I would think, like even a remote job. So I don't have too much information about his job, why he's with this, maybe it is more flexible or less stressful or something. There could be a lot of reasons that somebody chooses a job versus just like going for a high paying job. But I think even, you know, it's something to consider for sure. Like if you want to pay off your debt faster and you know, we're gonna go through everything, but if you wanna pay off your debt faster and invest more money, all of that stuff, you would be better off working on increasing your income. And I, yeah, I definitely think that a software developer could be making more than that. If y'all have any experience with that, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, maybe get, provide some resources for this person because I'm not too sure, but yeah, I think you could work on increasing your income. He also mentioned that they have a daughter that goes to kindergarten and daycare, which is quite expensive. We, I will show you the number that he shared for that. The good thing though is the daycare expense is not forever. So I'm thinking that this might be for the next year. And then after that, she would be, you know, in full on public school. I'm not sure the whole situation because what I'm assuming when I read this is that their daughter goes to kindergarten from like, you know, normal school hours and then maybe afterwards has to go to daycare because they're both working. So I'm not too sure if that's something that's going to continue after. That's a tough one. It's hard for me to just like make an assumption about that because if she needs 
care after going to school, after going to public school, then that, that expense could still be around for a few more years, even if it's like having a babysitter instead of going to daycare. We have never had credit card debt and we charge everything and pay it off in full each month so we can get points and miles. The debts we have paid off are a personal loan and the no interest of firm loans. We have stopped getting those since we do not want any debt anymore. The debts we have are student loans, car, and mortgage. That is amazing that you've paid off a couple of debts, congratulations, and also that you've never had credit card debt. That is great. The student loans, we have been paying $400 a month for the past couple of months, so only two have a minimum amount due, and we want to have those paid off in the next two months. The other accounts have zero amount due since I am on the save plan, but I want to pay $400 a month on those once the first two are done. I have included a spreadsheet of our budget, spending slash expenses, debts with the minimum payments, total amounts, and interest rates. I included August's budget with all of spending and September's budget with all of our spending so far. An update on that, I had emailed him before filming this video. In the spreadsheet that he provided me, he started updating, he did update all of September and then added in October. So I have a little bit more data to go off of. We have a high yield savings account of $7,126. $6,126 of that is for our emergency fund and $1,000 is for our dog in case he needs any vet visits or emergency. So basically that whole amount can be emergency fund. We are very behind investing and only have $1,893 in a 401k and $342 in a Roth account. My company matches 3%. And then 4% it matches 3.5, 5 it matches 4, and 6 it matches 4.5%. I am not contributing anything to my 401k right now. My wife's company matches 4% and she is not contributing right now either. Very first thing I would suggest y'all do is contribute to your 401k up to the match. So, so for his 401k, he said if he puts in 6%, his company matches 4.5%. I'm assuming that's the highest that they, they match. I would say 6% is, is a pretty good start. Contribute your 6% and then get your 4.5% match. So for him making a $63,000 salary, 6% 6 of that is $3,780 per year. That's gonna be $315 per month from your paycheck. And then your company is gonna match 2,835 throughout the year if you do the full 6%. 315 might sound like a lot, but I think you'll be surprised. You'll be pleasantly surprised once you start contributing. And I, I honestly don't think you'll feel it too, too much. The other thing is that this is going to lower your tax burden. So you will be paying less in taxes and it kind of balances out a little bit. Yes, your paychecks are going to be smaller, but I don't think it's going to be that much smaller than, than you think it would be. So absolutely, I do think you should be contributing to your 401k even while you have the debt because there is a match. I do wanna call out that it's really important to check your vesting period if there is one at all. So if you start contributing to your 401k and your company is matching that, is that match your money right away if you leave the job or is it vested after one year, uh, two years? It could be very long, it just depends. So that is something that is important to consider because there have been clients of mine who they told me about their 401k plan at work but they also had debt and all these other things they were working on and the plan that the company was offering was just awful. Like, yes, they offered a match, but it wasn't vest. It was like 50% vested after two years, something really ridiculous. So for those situations, it's not always ideal to contribute to your 401k. So assuming it's vested immediately or vested within like a, a decent amount of time where it's not gonna be like you have to be there for years and years, I do think that is a good first step. Same with your wife. And, and same conditions, be sure to, to read everything about it. Um, wife's company matches 4%. So yes, she should contribute up to the 4%. So he said she is getting paid hourly. So 1853 an hour. And based off of the income that he's putting in the spreadsheet, I don't think she's working full time. I honestly, I can't tell. So I'm going to say she's making anywhere from 24,000 to 40,000, like 40,000 if she's working full time. So if she's making 24,000, then that's gonna be 960 per year, which comes to $80 per month. Again, you won't feel that too much. And then her company is also putting in $80 per month. 
But on the other hand, if she's making 40,000 and then contributes 4%, that is 1,600 per year or about $133 per month. And then her company would match that. I could get into where your money should be invested uh, within your 401k. I feel like I should make a whole separate video on that, like how I choose and it depends on your risk tolerance, uh, it depends on your age. Personally, I like to have just 100% stock, so I have just two index funds. You, it's very likely that whatever platform your company uses, they have like plans that you can choose from and they'll invest in, into those. So you don't have to do any picking and choosing. But I, that's what I did at first, but then I soon picked my own. So I would do some research on that. Personally, I would say since you don't have too much invested yet, you do want to be a little bit more risky by having like primarily stocks. 40 is not old by any means. So I think you can afford to be a little bit risky for the next decade or so. But yes, yeah, something to look into. Okay, final bit of his email. Our question is, should we build up our emergency fund more to like $10,000 and then attack our debts? Or is $6,000 good for now? And once all of our debts are gone, then build up our savings. Also, since we are so far behind in investing, should we just pay the minimums on the debts and just invest in our 401ks and Roth accounts? I did already address the 401ks. We'll talk about the Roths. Um, and by the way, that is you investing in a traditional 401k, not a Roth 401k. To be honest, I had a really hard time with this situation. And that's because they're 40, which I, that's not old, but because they have so little invested, I do think they should prioritize investing over paying down debt. So what I ended up doing was just a little bit of research, just Googling things about like when you should be debt, what's the ideal age to be debt free? There's no set rules for this, you know? Um, I found one, it says Kevin O'Leary, who I'm not a huge fan of, he's from Shark Tank. He says you should be debt free by 45. Um, then there was this article that this financial planner disagrees and basically was saying that, you know, you don't need to be debt free by 45 because you may be better off investing. One of my favorite resources is the Money Guy Show. And I am going to link this video down below because they have this for every age, basically, or every decade. Um, and it's like financial planning for 40 year olds. So I was reading the transcript of that podcast. I think that is going to be really valuable for y'all to listen to or anybody who is approaching their 40s or in their 40s because they also talk about other things uh, like keeping up with your health is a big one. So if you haven't already prioritized your health, that's important. Even though that's not like directly related to finances, it is still so important because if you are unhealthy, it's going to cost you more money or um, you could lose your life type of thing. And, and then, you know, your family may struggle after that. Another thing they talked about was estate planning. So like having your will in place and you know, what, where your money's gonna go if something happens to you, especially if you have children, which y'all do. So I thought that was really valuable from this. And something that I've talked about before, which I've got, I got from the Money Guy show is the value of a dollar by age. So a dollar at the age of 20, if you invest that, it can turn into 88 by the time you retire and that's just because you have time on your side but then a dollar invested at 40 can turn into it literally said they they do air quotes into seven dollars so obviously your dollar is not going to go as far at 40 if you were to you know versus if you started investing at 20 and that's okay like you can't go back in time it just is what it is but that's why i think at this point you know you still have a solid couple of decades before true retirement. So I think that should be prioritized over putting extra to your debts. But I do think that y'all could find a bit of a balance. Now, the important question to ask here is how important is being debt free to you? Does it feel really stressful? Is it something that makes you lose sleep at night? Is there a date that you know, you have in mind, like you want to be completely debt free by 50 or 55? I think that's important to call out and think about because Let's say that you wanna be debt-free by 50. I think that's reasonable. 
and you can probably invest pretty heavily over the next decade and also pay down your debt. I think the really important thing though is increasing your income for sure. Like I don't know if that's gonna mean working more hours or for his situation, getting a, a different job that is higher paying or um, going down a different career path, but y'all probably will need to increase your income if you want to pay down this debt within 10 years and also be investing heavily to, to be prepared for true retirement. As for the emergency fund question, should we build up our emergency fund to 10K and then go to our other goals or is 6K good for now? The whole amount of money that you have in your high yield savings account, I would say is an emergency fund. Even if a portion of it is like reserved for anything with your dog, that's still if like an emergency comes up. So altogether, I would say that's just covering emergencies in general. And yeah, you have about $7,000 there. So you're like 3K from 10,000. 10, at first I was thinking like, no, let's, let's just leave it at 7K. But the more that I thought about it, I think y'all should aim to have like 10 to 12K to begin with, just because you have a house and you have a child. Two things that can be quite costly if something, and you have a dog. So three things that can be quite costly if something comes up. And obviously we don't want you to go into further debt if something does come up. So I think 10K is a, is a safe number to aim for and we'll see what that looks like, like how quickly you could, you could get to that. We are gonna go to my spreadsheets in just a moment, but I do want to pop up the numbers that he shared with me for August. I'm gonna put it on this side, August, and then September on this side. It looks like they are budgeting, but there's a couple of areas that they are going over budget. It looks like on a monthly basis. I mean, I only have like two months of, of data to look at. I would prefer like at least three. Yeah, it really, it looks like groceries, food out, and toiletries, they're spending a bit more in. If you look at both of the months, they, they went over budget. Uh, I'm also curious if that includes what you purchase for your dog, like is dog food or dog care included in that? I'm sure it is. Daycare is a big one, so he called that out. That is $900 per month. I have no clue on how long they will have that expense. Um, so we're just going to assume for, for quite some time. Nothing stood out as awful, but one thing that's a little concerning is the free spend categories. You can see that in August they budgeted 150, but they both went over that free spend. I'm sure this is just like anything personal that they want to do, which I think is healthy and good to budget for, but definitely try to stay within budget for that. So we'll talk about that. Um, and you can see that in September, they increased that budget to 200, but, um, well, the, his wife went over, <laughs> uh, went over by $276. And yeah, that really adds up. So if you are budgeting 200, but then end up spending over 400, like that's over 200 that could have gone to debt or investing. So it looks like that y'all may need to have a discussion about this and align your goals, align your priorities. What is it that you want out of life? What is it that you want as a family, for your daughter, for your future? Uh, because it is important to have money invested to retire with. And it is important to be debt free by the time you reach retirement because it just makes life a lot easier. And y'all can definitely do that, but I think you gotta you got to align on that and get a little bit tighter with the budget. Let me also pop up the debts that he sent to me. So this is in a spreadsheet. Um, one thing to mention is that those first two student loans, uh, on here, the total amount, it says 350 and 701, but he did update me and say that one is $39 and the other is 219. So I'm basically just not going to count those. I'm going to assume that they can probably pay that off potentially this month or at least early November. Something I did ask him about after his email is if there's been an update on his student loan debt because he said that the minimum payments were zero dollars. So I was like, okay, maybe that changed, but it has not. He said that they are still a zero dollar minimum payment until February of 2025. So that is good, but there is still interest on them. So something we still wanna tackle. And then they do have a car loan, about $11,000 there, 4.79%, which isn't the worst thing ever. 
and then a house. Luckily, the mortgage is pretty low. That's that's great, one hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. Interest rate is a bit high, five point eight nine, but there's you know that's just what it is right now. And maybe in the future when rates go down, they could refinance that. For this video, I am not going to focus on the mortgage whatsoever. I think it's more important for you to pay down the student loans and the car loans, if anything. And, you know, the house, you will just continue. You can make a couple of, a little bit extra payments throughout the year if you wanted to, to save on interest. But that's not like top priority to pay down just because it's so much, so much more debt. And I think eventually you can get the interest rate lower. Um, so yeah, we're gonna focus more so on investing, the student loans, the car, and saving. All right, we are on my debt snowball slash avalanche tracker. If you are interested in this, you can purchase it on my Etsy shop. I'm filming this in October, so that's what you'll see up here. The situation is a little bit complicated and I don't have a perfect answer. This is something that would definitely be better to check in on like on a monthly basis or at least a quarterly basis because there's just a lot of dependencies, you know? So I am making a couple of assumptions here. This is, yeah, I'm just, I'm trying my best, okay? So I apologize if there's no straightforward answer, but that's just how it, it usually is. I did list all of your debts here, but I, reordered them from from what you gave them to me like i said i'm going to ignore those first two student loans because i think you'll be able to knock those out this month or i would definitely aim to like knock that out in october make some extra income somehow sell stuff around the house uh find some free items and flip them work extra hours if you need to i don't know but definitely try to speed up that process so that you can just have these and also the mortgage isn't on here but i did reorder these from highest interest rate to lowest interest rate so when he sent them to me they were from the lowest balance to the highest balance i prefer to prioritize paying down debts using the debt avalanche method just because you are going to save money and make faster progress that way he told me that they're doing 400 dollars per month to their student loans i don't think that's absolutely you don't have a minimum payment, so you don't need to do that. Okay, so first of all, let me say that I did $400 divided by eight, that's $50 toward each debt. So if you're just doing, if you're not assigning it to a specific loan, it's gonna put about $50 to each debt. It's probably different based off of the interest rate, but for this spreadsheet to work, I needed to put a number into each one. Student loan number one is first because that has the highest interest rate at 6.8%. I do think you should focus on paying this one down after, you know, once you've got your emergency fund to 10K, that might take a little bit of time, but then focus on student loan debt number one. And then after that would be your car. And what I like about your car being second is that it does have the second highest interest rate, but also the minimum payment. It's not that bad of a minimum payment, but if you are able to free up $346 each month, then that can go toward investing or to your savings or to your debt. Ideally, it would go to investing at this point in your life. Um, yeah, I think that's important to prioritize as second. If you were to only put 400 to your debt each month, um, y'all actually, it says September 38 up here, but that's just because this doesn't go past 15 years. So even after 15 years of payments, you would still have $18,000 of debt, and that would all be the student loan debt. So it would take you probably 20 years or so to pay everything down, which isn't ideal, but a lot of things are going to change in your finances over the next 20 years, you know? Like your daughter is not gonna be in daycare, you know, all the way through 20 years old. Um, you are going to pay off the car and that will help a lot. You're going to probably lower your interest rates on some things. You may get a higher paying job, you could move, you could, yeah, there's lots of things that could, could change even over the next year or two. So this is just like a projection, but definitely not what it has to be. So let's look at their budget and spending. I, th this is the original, like this is basically what he gave to me. Their income is about 5,642, but based on their actual income, it seems like sometimes they get, they earn a little bit more, but I just kept it at 5,642. And then I more so went off of what you're actually spending for these, the mortgage, utilities, car, phone, car, the, all of that stuff at the top is is the same as what you shared with me. Um, but for groceries and food out, 
and toiletries this was was included there i bumped that up to 950 because that looks like what you're more realistically spending in that category and then her free spend his free spend i put that at 200 for each because uh, it's probably higher it looks like each month you are doing at least 200. like i said i only have two months of data to go off of um, so I don't really know, but I'm going to say it's probably closer to 200 per month, poten potentially more. And then it looks like each month you're doing the remaining, like, so it would be about $500 or so is what you're putting to savings. And actually, if you look at the last couple of months, they've done a little bit more than that. So again, I think it's because they're, they're earning a little bit more than the 5,642, which is good. Now, the next numbers that I want to look at are if you start contributing to your 401k and if we adjust some things here. Now, I think this is going to, I'm going to, I'm going to change things as I talk through this. Okay. So first of all, your income is lower. This is maybe about what you will be earning after you start contributing to your 401k, the both of you. This is definitely just me guessing what, what this will look like. So it could be a little bit more. It could be a little bit less. It's going to be like between $5,000 and $5,200 something, I would assume. We did talk about first prioritizing your emergency funds and getting that to $10,000. So what I'm going to say to do, uh, let's come down to your student loan. Let's put this at zero. I know that your student loans have a fairly high interest rate, especially that one that's at like 6.8%, and you are not going to be earning as much in your high yield savings account. But I think we should prioritize, since you have no minimum payment on your student loans, I think we should prioritize the emergency fund. So until you reach 10K in your emergency fund, we are going to put zero to student loans. Uh, I think you should, as I always like to call out, be careful with Amazon. This is, I'm assuming, Amazon Prime. Um, I know sometimes people have Prime so they can watch like the TV shows and movies that Prime offers. But if you have HBO and Hulu, like cut one of these out. It's not going to make or break your bank, but I'm going to suggest cutting one of these out. And, and ideally that would be Amazon because oftentimes people buy too many things off of Amazon when they have Prime because you can just get things within 24 hours and it's very problematic as I always say. I did lower your, you have budgeted 150 before for your free spending, but definitely try to stick to that. Ideally this would be like a hundred dollars. I would get tighter with this and you know really really focus on your financial goals. You don't have to have a boring life, you don't have to restrict yourself, but just start to align your actions with what you're what you really want in life you know question the things that you are purchasing if you are buying just random things that you know maybe they make you feel happy in the moment but truly a couple of weeks later you you don't even remember you bought them yeah just check in on that make sure you are are putting your money where you really want to and then you can put it looks like about five hundred dollars or more to your savings if you actually stick to this budget so if you're able to do at least 500 per month to your emergency fund, I, I want y'all to set a goal for this. Um, this is going to be November. Try to do that by February. March at the latest, but I'm going to say from November through February, focus on getting your emergency fund up to 10K. As I said before, maybe y'all need to go through some things and, and sell them so you can increase your income real quick or pick up some extra shifts just so you can make faster progress on your goals. Because it's not the best thing to be putting zero dollars to debt that is is continuing to grow from the interest. The good news is though, you'll be you'll be contributing to your 401k. So you'll be investing throughout that time. Okay, so after that your emergency fund will be at 10k. You're still contributing to your 401k, but now the focus is going to be on that first student loan, the 6.8%. Now, honestly, I would love, the ideal situation would be you being able to, the both of you, ideally, being able to increase your income so that you're contributing to your 401k, you have your emergency fund, you are putting at least 500 to your debt, an extra 500 to your debt, maxing out both of your Roth IRAs. But I don't know that that's possible. Like, I think you do need to 
focus on your debt before going to your Roth IRA because at least you have, you know, your 401k going for you. But yeah, this is, like I said, this is kind of a, a tough situation to plan out. But with this situation, you're still getting that same income, 5,172. Um, I didn't change anything. I'm still keeping the daycare on there. I don't know at what point I should remove that, but that will be important because that's a lot of money that could instead go, and that's gonna change so many things. So it is really important, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I actually lowered the free spending even more because uh, so, I think with time, maybe you'll, you'll start to get a little bit more motivated and want to adjust it, I hope. So I put that down to 100. And then I did put savings in here just in case, like if you have some sinking funds or something that you wanna just keep adding to or if you wanna just keep building your emergency fund, oftentimes people like to do that. So I put in 100. So I'm going to say you should now focus on that student loan number one with the 6.8% until that's paid off. But reminder that this isn't perfect. Within the next three years, I don't think y'all will have the daycare uh, yeah, just a lot of things could look different. You could have a higher income, but it's I'm so sorry It's just too hard to predict that like if you at this point by like January February March of 2026 You would have paid off that first student loan and then paid off your car as well So we can take that out for the next one. So let's go to that. This is going to be your 401 You're still contributing to your 401k this whole time. You've been doing that uh, you're now going to start contributing, maxing out your Roth IRA, whatever you need to do to max that out. And the good thing is that now your car loan is going to be zero. So we'll highlight that because that is going to be gone. Student loan, by that point, you might have a minimum payment. So I'm just going to put it at 250 just in case. These will keep at 100. I'm going to put zero for daycare as well. Sorry, kind of bouncing around here, but just thinking this through. Okay, Roth IRA, I did include the Roth IRA here. If you want to, uh, I mean, this is for 2024, so I'm, I think the max that you can contribute for 2024 is going to be $7,000. So you have 16 months to do that from January 2024 through April of 2025. So if you divide 7,000 by 16, multiply that by two, because you both should be maxing out your Roth IRA, that's 875 per month, which is, is great. And then even if you're doing that, you are going to have cash to work with. So at that point, you can decide what you wanna do with that. It may be putting extra to your debts, which I think is a good idea because you will have a, a good balance of everything. So, and the good thing is that at that point, you will be putting extra to your debt. You'll have a, a solid emergency fund. Even if you have to use it throughout the next five years or so, I think you could probably replenish it within a few months and then get back on track. Um, you'll be maxing out your Roth IRA, contributing to your 401k. Maybe at that point you could increase it. Yeah, I, I feel like, I know this is kind of all over the place, but this is the best way to project things and, and kind of figure out the best plan. If you go down this path, are you going to retire with millions and millions of dollars? No, you're not, but you are going to be in an okay situation. Since, since you're 40 years old, you still have, you know, 20 years, 25 years, potentially 30 years of working still, and you can be contributing to your 401k and your Roth IRAs during that time, as well as brokerage accounts, and definitely you'll be debt-free by then, no matter what, if you just make minimum payments. Let's look at what investments would look like. This is tough to plan out, but just to get an idea, with what they have in their 401k and Roth IRA, it totals to 2,235. Um, for three years, they're focusing on those first two debts, so student loan debt number one and the car. And then let's change this to seven. And they're gonna be putting in, they're just contributing to their 401k at least about 415, we'll say end, that's fine. And let's see what that would look like. Okay, so by the time you pay off student loan debt number one, and your car, you'll have about $19,000. Okay, so then after that, you have $19,000. It's gonna take you another two years to be completely debt-free, and you're gonna be still contributing to your 401k, but also now you're maxing out your Roth IRAs. 875 plus 415 is 1290, but I'm just gonna bump this, I'll do 1300. That's gonna be it, okay. 
So by the time you're like 45, 46, you're gonna have $55,000 invested, but you're going to be debt free aside from your mortgage. So then let's say for the next 15 years, 15, um, you probably can bump this up, maybe 1500 that you start investing total per month. I really think it could be more. Could probably be, We'll look at what 2000. So by the time you're 60 years old or so, you'll have over $600,000. Let's see if you did 2000 instead, over $770,000. And that should be fine for you to go into retirement and be able to survive off of that. Um, again, these are also just very rough estimates. Like there's so much that could change. I know I keep saying that, but that's really important to call out because, you know, this is, it's probably going to be higher than, than what I'm projecting here. So let me summarize everything that I just went through. First up would be start contributing to your 401k up to the full match, assuming that that is vested immediately, or at least is a pretty good plan. Focus on your emergency fund first. Within about four months or so, I think you can get that emergency fund to $10,000. I do think you could speed that up and get there faster if you increase your income some way. But throughout that time, you're still contributing to your 401k plan throughout from now until the rest of your working career, putting at least up to the employer match for your 401k. After that, I suggest focusing on student loan debt number one, which has an interest rate of 6.8%, as well as your car. So you are still contributing to your 401k, your emergency fund is fully funded. You can continue to put a little bit to your emergency fund or other savings if you wanted to, but now any extra income, you're going to focus on student loan debt number one. And you wanna make sure that any extra payments that you're making to your student loans, you, you wanna make sure that you're pointing it directly to student loan debt number one. So the highest interest one is getting paid off first, or you're only putting money to that one. Um, you could put a little bit to the other ones if you wanted to because those are going to grow But yeah, just make sure you're putting the bulk of it You have to actually tell them where to put the money when you make extra payments And I know advantage allows for you to do that because I used to do that And then soon after you pay off that you'll be able to pay off your car and now you'll have a uh, over $300 to roll into investments or your next debt after that, once you pay off those two high interest loan debts the student loan number one and the car you will start maxing out your Roth IRA every year moving forward. You should be able to be debt-free aside from the mortgage within the next five, six years or so, but even if it takes longer, it will be before retirement. And by the time you reach retirement, you should have well over half a million dollars for you to work with, and that should be sufficient in retirement. And you'll wanna continue the positive money habits that you build throughout this time in retirement, of course. So you should still continue to budget. You wanna be in control of your spending and allocating your money where you are prioritizing your spending, because no, you will not be able to like go crazy in retirement, but you should have enough to comfortably survive. Yeah, per usual, I don't have the straightest answer for y'all because there's just going to be a lot of changes and I did make quite a few assumptions, but hopefully this was helpful. Those of you watching, please comment down below if I left anything out or if there is something important that should be shared. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one.